Hey guys, Nick Gerosos, and welcome to the new hit series, How to Fight Like Cobra Kai. What we're going to be doing in this series is we're going to be doing fight analysis. I'll be taking fight scenes from the show, breaking them down, and teaching you how to defend yourself. But before we start, make sure to subscribe, to hit the bell, smash that like button, and if you want to learn more self-defense, go visit my website, nickjoseph.com. Now let's get started. All right guys, so this is one of my favorite scenes as well, and this is the school fight, right? So guys, don't be a bully. Again, you see he's going up against three attackers. The first thing you wanna do is bring your hands up. I keep saying this in every video, but it's, you know, again, having your hands up, protect your center line to be able to go offensive or defensive. So right here, he gives him a shove. Now we're gonna be looking at that later on, defense against a shove. What is he actually doing? He's testing him. He wants to see his reaction. He's basically feeling him out. He comes up. Now, right there, he should have brought his hands up the second time. You never want to keep your hands down. And over here, now, this is the committed shove and push where he's actually, you know, creating distance. So the person will push you or shove you to create that distance to punch you. So right there, his hands should have came up. Throw, blocks it, does that trap. Personally, I, you know, this is not what I teach to actually grab and wrap the arm around. For me, it's more like bring up your hands and step in and block, jam and strike at the same time. Strike to the nose and the fight is on. Again, tackles him. I kind of like the, this fight scene where you actually see him being tossed and thrown around in the environment. Nothing too fancy, puts him in a choke. Over here, you could see the back elbow. And that back elbow could, you know, could work. Uh, turn, again, turns around, throws the round kick over here. Now the fight is on. Now, now that sweep, highly unlikely you'll be able to time that punch in that sweep. However, it's pretty cool to watch. Again, over here, he grabs him. Actually, that elbow works well. Nice push kick, a round kick as well. Now, what I really like about this and what we're going to be covering in this lesson is how to use your improvised weapons. I love the fact that he's kicking the chair to create distance, picking up the tray to use as an improvised weapon to just start smacking the attackers around and using his environment. Again, I love this scene, you know, really great way how he's using his environment, how he's using the table, the tray, how to keep everybody at distance and using your environment, that situational awareness is key and that's what I'm gonna be teaching you in this lesson and we're gonna be focusing on how to use those improvised weapons, especially against multiple attackers. They are crucial. Let's get started. So in this lesson, I wanna focus on two things. The first one we're gonna look at is if you're faced with your attacker and the difference between a shove and a committed push as well as a breakdown of how to use your environment and improvised weapons, okay? So the first thing is, like we saw in the video, this is a, a, a shove. This is basically the guy wants to test you out, see you know, who he's dealing with, your reaction. He's basically feeling you out before he decides whether he's gonna commit or not. So if I'm here and he does this, my hands right away should come up. At this point, the instant he's pushed or shoved you, I'm not gonna take some kind of more passive, non-aggressive stance. I'm going straight into my passive stance. I'm creating distance. I start talking to him. I wanna cover my angles and decide, do I strike, I don't strike. I wanna be ready offensively or defensively. Now, when you're looking at the committed push, where the person pushes, and I've seen this actually working in clubs, where an attacker pushed, he went flying, hit his head behind the wall, and he passed out. Now, when you see that big committed shove, you're also gonna see it through body language because chances are he's gonna move back, he's gonna step back, he's gonna put more core, more power into it. So if you, and my hands are up, again, in every single video, guys, over and over, I'm always teaching you guys to bring your hands up. I know it's, it's very repetitive, but I wanna make sure that you guys get it. Okay, so I'm my hands up. So if, if Costa decides to go for a committed shove, my hands, what I want to do is step off to the side and step off to the side and move the energy. Okay, let him. So if he's coming here, I'm doing this. From there, I could come in with a with a with a forearm strike. 
Uh, it depends on exactly the movement. He might do this, go, come in, he might push, and I might just grab and just leap, let, let the energy go right through the wall, okay? So the key, however, is to have your hands up. So if he pushes where he's just talking to you and he does this, my hands are gonna come up, bam, I'll strike the throat right away, right? I, the instant the person has made contact with me, for me, in terms of what I like to teach, is that the instant he grabs you, pushes, shoves you, the fight is on right there. Now at the same, now if he's talking to me and I think he's gonna wind up for a big push, my hands are gonna come up. Now have you noticed, it doesn't always come up perfectly, but the idea is to not allow the person to actually be able to push you back and, and try to get you to the point where he's gonna strike you. Now in the video, what I love is how he used his environment. So there's three improvised, three types of improvised weapons that I teach. The first one is projectile. So what's projectile? A water bottle. So projectile means anything I can throw. Sand, bottles, uh, uh, you know, if I had clothes, my cap, mean anything I could throw to create a flinch response. Once I create a flinch response, it buys me a split second to either enter or maybe get to another improvised weapon. Another type of improvised weapon is range. Right here, I have my belt. So grabbing it this way, this, I have my belt to use. If I had a chair, anything that gives me range between me and my attacker. The third one we have is static improvised weapon. Like you saw in the fight analysis, he used a school table, like the lunch, the lunch table. He moved around it. He kicked a chair. He picked up the tray. That all comes down to situational awareness. Being aware of your environment is crucial because you, your environment is full of weapons and the idea for you is to learn how you can use each weapon. If you're in the street, what's a static improvised weapon? A car, right? You can move around a car. Again, it creates distance, it creates opportunity for you to pick up a weapon, to be able to go from one weapon to another or maybe run. So always remember, you wanna use your environment and everything around you. Again, keep in mind, the amount of force that you use must parallel the amount of danger and threat that you're in. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you wanna learn more self-defense, go visit my website, nickjosephs.com. And make sure to subscribe, to hit the bell. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and stand strong.